it's going to be more important in the future, as you know, because of Moore's law. We're going to have computers that are going to be more sensible and have more calculation power, and you heard that now before, than us human beings, that, that, that point will be there. We have to start thinking on how we are going to collaborate with these robots. This is Boston Dynamics. I was there a couple of months ago, and they're top leading now at this in the humanoid robots. These are made for defense. They just take over tasks of soldiers so that they can carry the bags, etc. And, uh, and they're already capable. They never complain about cold feet, as you can see. And they're relatively stable. They can even imitate an English drunk tourist, as you can see here now. <coughs> they even do a better thing in uh, imitating that one. And n now all of a sudden, these robots also start doing jobs from us. So we don't have to pick up boxes in the future. They can do it for us. So don't we have to do the pickup boxing anymore? Is this another thing they're going to take over? And I wanted to show this also to start the discussion of how we're going to react on these robots. If we can cheer for them in football, can we also feel sorry for robots? Now, do you feel sorry for this robot? I do, a bit. Uh, this is just a, a piece of pistons and some mechanics, etc. And they just climb there. Now, would you be a programmer of this robot? Would you just program a little bit of humanity in this robot? That if this happens after three times, that you just say, ah, cut it. Just raise the mechanical middle finger, huh, you know? And, and show him that. It even gets worse. What about this? Would you program something of revenge in this robot, you know? Or some kind of thing that at a certain moment, so now I've had enough, stop bullying me. Because I don't think that might also be a big danger, because they stand up, now he turns around, and where's the guy with the beard, huh? Where's the guy with the beard? And take him back. Now, to my point of view, this already encounters a discussion that we should have in what happens if these robots get stronger as us. Would we allow them to copy a little bit of human behavior. And because maybe if we s just keep on bullying them, they can't get back to us because they keep on evolving. This is a few years later when the robots do a little bit more than before. <laughs> now I have to, sh yeah, you get extra assurance. This is, this is fake. You can, you can look this, this is Boss Town Dynamics, it's not Boston Dynamics. Look for it on the internet, it's an eight minute uh, movie and in the end you see the making of to just to make you a little bit more relaxed because we are not that far yet. But it is about time that we make some rules and actually we already made some rules about 80 years ago. It was Asimov's Three Laws of Robotics, which clearly said these are 80 years old. Robot might not injure a human being or through inaction allow a human being to come to harm, so they will never they should never be able to harm us. And they always have to obey orders unless it might lead to harming people. And they must protect their own unless the other two uh, uh, might happen. So that's the thing, that's robotics. But would we be able to act as a certain kind of gods to these robots in order to make sure that they stick to these rules? And would this also happen in North Korea? If they could have, can we control them to also fulfill kind of laws? And will these robots always be robots as we just imagined them, as I just showed you? Can it also be a chatbot that you talk to? Or can it be a Facebook algorithm? Or can it be a car, for instance? And my background on itself is mobility, and there's a lot of discussion on these self-driving cars. Actually, uh, Google says this will be the future. In five years from now, we will see this Kodak moment happening that every car will be self-driving mainly because cars are too unsafe. Humans in cars are too unsafe. They make the mistakes. They're responsible for 95% of the accidents. So we have to get the people out of the loop, and we have the self-driving system just driving around. They said in five years this Kodak moment would happen, and Volkswagen and all the other ones will be the Kodak. They said this seven years ago. It didn't happen yet. And I think there's a fundamental problem why it will happen that has a sheer consequence also on how we look to future jobs. So I just wanted to shortly dive into this. Because this, this robot is nicely programmed to follow the rules and the regulations that are there for cars. But that's not how real life works. 
I just want to take you to Amsterdam. This is just an average situation in Amsterdam. This is a street where the bicycles have way to all the other cars. You see, so the cars have to wait before the bicycles all pass. Now, you can wait forever if you would do so, so we agreed that at a certain moment, you just close your eyes and go through. That's an unwritten rule, and everybody knows about it, and nothing goes wrong. Another unwritten rule is that a delivery van comes up that everybody stops because they know delivery vans don't stop. So if you want to survive it, a lot of people say there's a lot of accidents happening because this is all unregulated rules, unwritten rules. Look what happens between the girl there and the car and says, oh, you go first, although I have way. And yes, accidents happen here, big accident. This is the biggest hap accident that happened in three hours of footage. And they're still friends, nobody's harmed. The bicycles still work and she decides that bi biking is not so much her thing. <coughs> These are all unregulated rules, unwritten rules. And can we ever program robots in order to learn or follow unwritten rules? I think, yes, we can learn them to follow that. 